if you look at yesterday, the last two days, these supply demand lines have been calling these big rips up and downs in the market. And basically, let me blow this up for you. It's very simple. These are supply demand lines. Uh, what ha these are automatically generated 24 to 48 hours before the uh, before the the prices even hit. And what they do is they allow us to look for continuation patterns of trend. So whether it be we're trending down or trending up, we're looking for break retest trades off these levels. Yeah, yeah, good and uh, record, Gerald. Are you recording? Okay. So these supply demand lines are automatically generated with our software. Now, you can put these on your own charts, and this is universal in all markets. We've been having a lot of success with our members inside and outside the room, and it's one of my best indicators I've ever created because what it does is it looks in the past where there's been major accumulation or distribution because old support becomes new resistance, old resistance becomes new support, and more importantly, old accumulation or distribution becomes major levels of interest in future trades. And these levels are generated uh, 24, 48 hours, even 72 hours before these lines even come up. I mean, before they've, they're even hit. So they're very leading. They're a very leading indicator. And what they allow us to do is they allow us to play off these indicators. These indicators, these uh, supply demand lines have become so accurate with our traders in the room that traders don't even trade any levels at all until we hit a supply demand line or a market profile level. So if you're trading the system this morning, you had a heck of a trade here, break retest trade, and you had a trade down here also at the, at the demand line. So old supply becomes new demand, old demand becomes new supply. So what does that mean is this was a supply line this morning, meaning it had interest in it on the last couple of days where there's been a level where there's been some accumulation or distribution there. Remember, these are electronically traded markets. So these levels are generated by all the hedge funds, prop firms, professional traders, high frequency traders, and they leave their footprint. Well, this old supply line, since trend was up, we use moving averages for trend. We don't use them for support and resistance because they're worthless by nature. We don't use them for crossover techniques. We use them for trend direction. They're great for trend direction. That's about it. But you can see I have a longer term MA and my shorter MAs are up. So trend was up. So what I want to do, we don't want to sell supply when it hits. We want to break through supply because supply is old resistance and we want it to become new demand. That's how supply demand works. Old supply becomes new demand. Old demand becomes new supply. We had some great trades yesterday like this yesterday, in the last two days actually. So that became the new demand line. So old supply on top becomes new demand when it breaks through. Now what I want to see is I want to see a simple ABC long. I want to see us break through this level. I'll blow it up for you a little bit. Break through that level. I want to rotate back down to the level. I can break back through this line by the wick of the candle, but I just cannot by the closing of the candle. You can't, you can't, you don't want to close below the candle. The only time you can do that if you got symmetry dots right below there, it happens sometimes where the candle will just close below it, but you get a positive market delta and then it'll just steam right up. That's okay. I just don't want to see a, a, a couple candle close below symmetry dots, then we usually crash down. But that's the ABC long you're looking for. That's your entry right at that positive market delta. So you want to see that candle turn green with positive market delta on your five Simrenko. And positive market delta, I'll show you in a second, right below this chart. So that is a buy entry according to our system. Old supply becomes due, due demand with trend. Okay? Vice versa. If this trend changes this morning and we start cranking down and we cut through the supply line, then old demand right here becomes new supply, vice versa. So these lines are so accurate. They'll come back up.
they'll test it and then you'll see a move down like this all right so remember the easiest thing to do is old supply becomes new demand and then if it breaks back down through old demand you're going trend you want to break through becomes new supply so you just got to remember that concept because this is order flow this is not my opinion it's not your opinion this is actually where the market had congestion or accumulation distribution in the past and that's all the money come in the market it has nothing to do with you and I it has everything to do with money order flow in the market that's why these lines are so so accurate okay so we want to play off these lines if you're trading the system if you had any success with this at all you know that these lines are where you want to trade what we don't want to trade is we want to stay out since we got these lines in here we want to stay out of the middle stay out of this don't try to trade in the middle because that's where you're going to get stopped out quite a bit because there's no really support resistance in uh, from all the institutional traders and all the high frequency traders in the past so we want to see where there's congestion all right if there's congestion we want to look to buy now you got to come with it a couple ticks see this came in with a couple ticks I don't want to be five six ten ticks away from this thing I want to be within a couple ticks of my supply demand lines on any market you trade I don't care what it is you got to be within a couple ticks right so if we do that we're good to go now if you look at yesterday we, we came down and broke retested the same thing you're just going to trade off these supply demand lines okay so this morning old supply becomes new demand old demand becomes new supply so this is our level right here that we want to play off of this morning now these will generate during the day so you may see a supply or demand line that pop up let's say right here it just may start generating right now from where the price is and it'll go in the future that's called a fresh supply demand line those are very accurate to trade off of so you want to trade off of them with overall trend direction now what we want to do is we want to use this market delta then over here to time our supply demand trades so how we want to do it is old supply becomes new demand old demand becomes new supply so when this was a demand buy this last trade setup we had you want to see positive market delta so you want to see this indicator right here close let's say this was a buy you want to see it close green once it closes green you can open up the position your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low you want to see the first three candles you want to see the first three candles on this market delta be green if you get in I mean uh, uh, yeah the, the the green candle if it cl if you get in with a positive market delta and the next candle closes red on a five sim Renko, you probably should take a small loss because order flow is not in your direction but if you get three candles in the same direction you typically got a good trade now if you lease a system which a lot of traders lease that don't even log in this room other markets what they like to do and other traders in the room they'll put a five and three sim five and three sim market delta beside each other because what the three sim will do let's say we're coming down we break retest this level right here they will let the five sim turn green and uh, for for to get in for an entry but they won't enter there they'll wait for the three sim to go up the first red bar down for retracement and then they'll take the next green bar what that does it allows you to get into M tops and W bottoms after confirmation on a five sim I've got a lot of traders that do that in other words what they'll do at this major inflection point we'll look to break through right we'll look to break through the demand line we'll look for it to retest and they'll look for positive market delta on this time frame now I show the five sim in the room if you want if you lease the program you can put the five and three next to each other what traders are doing to have they're having a lot of success with this they'll let it turn green on the five sim to know that you have a momentum on your side you're turning at this level but then instead of opening up at the next bar they will look at the three sim and wait for the first retracement first red bars and get into the next green bars in other words what you're doing is you're buying a higher low on a smaller time frame after your larger time frame gave you confirmation that that pivot level should work out it's a really neat way to do it what a lot of traders are having success with so 
you can either trade strictly off the five sim right here with market delta at these major supply demand lines turns green get in stop loss two ticks below the swing low you you you, you close your position out if you are if these three candles are red closes red count one two three if they're green you can hold on to the position what we're trying to do is we're trying to get in runs we're trying to get in big runs so you'll see these big runs sometimes so in other words if this is the buy if this is the buy right here if I'm buying at this level or in market delta one two three then I don't care if these candles turn red because that's more that's showing distribution as long as the first three are green, that market should continue to the next supplier demand line. So that's what we want to try to do. But if you want to add the three sim and try to look for M tops, W bottoms, it works really great that way. Now, the one thing we, we like to do is I told you about the trend. The, the trends, you got to get the trend first. When you first log in, that's the most important thing. If you got the trend wrong, you're not going to be very successful at trading the system. So we need to get the trend right first. There's two ways to get the trend. When you first log in, that's the first thing you look at. I don't care about market delta. I don't care about supply demand lines. I don't care about market profile over here. Nothing is more important than getting in my, the market can only do two things. Either we trend or we chop. That's it. Either we're trading a trending market or we're trading an oscillating or chop market. Period. There's nothing else we can do. That's what the market does. It goes sideways or goes vertical. So right, we so you log in this morning, you know that the moving averages. I got my nine Simrenko over here is my larger time frame. Nine Simrenko. Look at the MAs. They are pointed up. Now I got my 200 MA down here, my larger MA. Above the blue, you're typically in an uptrend. Below the blue, blue, you're typically in a downtrend. In fact, we see this blue line. If it overlaps a supplier demand line, it typically bounces right off of that. Uh, traders see that a lot. So just by gauging where the blue line is and my other MAs, you can see right away that we are in a move up. We're not in a move down. We're moving up. We're not moving down. So since we know that, my smaller and intermediate MAs are all, all pointed up, right? What I like to see is I like to see another this, this other indicator get in line with my moving averages. If it's green, because I have a trend filter built into my trend box, it's called a trend box. If it's green, the market's going is pushing up there's more buyers and sellers if it's red the market's pushing down I got more sellers and buyers so if I just look at these two charts the nine cents pointing up I got all green trend boxes my moving averages are up I look at my five sim rank over here this is a five sim with a five sim delta my all my indicators are green I'm green on this green and green on this green I've got market alignment because my larger time frame is going up and my smaller time frame is going up on my trend box they're both green boxes my trend boxes now you can break it down a little further. Do we have, when you break through the supply demand line, since we are coming up through the supply demand, and that was a buy signal right here, is it green? Yes, but you can tell if the market has speed or not. And I want speed in the market because as traders, if we don't have speed in the market, we can't make any ticks. Now speed is characterized by this. You see this trend box that closes, let me point this out. This is very important for you to understand. You see that trend box, that closed trend box. That closed trend box, the green box, if it has two candles or less that closes inside of a closed trend box, two candles or less, they're trying to really mark the market up. They're trying to excel this market to the upside. If I see I'm breaking through a supply line because the trend's up, we don't sell this, we're trying to buy the break retest. If I see two candle close there, see how the candles close inside of the closed trend box, two candle close. I don't count the ones that straddle the line, only the ones that are inside of the box. If I see two candles or less close, there's major speed coming in the market. They're trying to mark the market up. Vice versa, if it's in a downtrend and I see two candle close on if with red candles and both alignment, they're trying to mark the market down. So you want to be a net seller. So we can see we had speed coming in the market here. Two candle close. I broke through. I retested, paused the market delta right on my demand line, and we took off. Now, you probably ask yourself, well, what's the difference between this demand line and this demand line over here in the 9 sim? Because I got 32.17 over here, and I got 32.18 half uh, over here. So 32.17 a quarter is on my longer time frame, and 32.18 a half. 
If I see those two levels are close, I'll take the highest high of the two if I'm a buyer. In other words, 17 and quarters here and 18 and a half here. So I want to be a buyer of 18 and a half retest. Okay? 17 and a quarter, 18 and a half of my zone to buy. But 18 and a half is a higher of the two. I'll trade off of that. If I'm in a downtrend and 17 and a quarter is a lower of the two, I'll wait for a break retest of 17 and a quarter because that's the lower of the two. But typically, they're usually line up within a quarter to a half a point of each other. And then you got really good confluence off a of shorter term and longer term accumulation distribution line. Okay? The idea is we're trying to go level to level. Now, another great way to do it is this. So that's how we do that with positive market delta or negative market delta. All right? Market profile over here can be used as an additional tool. What that does, it allows me when we had that break retest trade at on my institutional level right there, my supply, my demand line was right here, right? That's your break retest. Look what it did on my market profile level two. It broke out a high value area. It's the same concept. You want to trade market market profile like you trade my supply demand lines. What happens is when they when you have two indicators saying the same thing, you got yourself a major possible move. And they happen exactly at the same price point in time. My market profile broke retested exactly when my supply demand line broke retested. That's called confluence. So you can use the market profile on any market. If you lease a program, it works on any of them. You can use them together. You can use the market profile and supply demand lines. That's all you need to do. You don't need any other support and resistance lines. You don't need any other. There's thousands and thousands of indicators out there. You might as well just throw them all out because every indicator works once. But does every indicator work with order flow? No. These two indicators are strictly order flow. They're not lagging. They're very leading indicators. These are the one of the market profiles has been around since 1985 by Peter Stoudemire off the CBOE. That's the only indicator that has tested time and time again to create support and resistance over and over and over again. And we don't use standard market profile. We don't use no 30-minute market profile. We use a, a couple-hour market profile, and it's very, very accurate. So that's all we got to do for support and resistance. Supply demand lines that automatically get generated. And my market profile, that's automatically generated. That's it. Then we just try to go with trend. Now, a market profile, very simply, is these big, thick, red, blue, and green lines are very important. Because that's all the volume that's coming in the market. That's not my opinion, your opinion. That's all the money coming in of these electronically traded markets. And it's showing you by the red line HVA, the control point, the most volume that's traded in the blue, and the green line, the LVA. The second most of mar uh, uh, market profile level are these thin red and thin green lines. There's only two market profiles I really concentrate on. I don't concentrate so much on these dots. These dots are, are more price based. But the most important ones that you want to look at are the red, blue, and green levels. Thin green, thin red. Thick green, thick blue, thick green, or thick red. Those tell you if I'm above all market profiles, I've got nothing but upside. In fact, 85%, 80 to 85% of our trades are all with trend, right? We, we very rarely counter trend trade. The only time you can counter trend trade against the trend boxes and against the moving averages, if you get back inside of this thin red line, or you get back inside of this thin green line, that's the only time you're going to counter trend trade the market. Because when I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show a couple years ago, over 6,000 traders around the world, over 90% of the traders I talk to are counter-trend traders, and that's why they continue to lose over and over and over again. We never counter-trend trade against our trend boxes or our MAs. The only time we can do it, if we get back inside this thin red or thin green line, we'll break, we'll retest it, and it should come all the way down to the next thin green line. Right there. That's the only time we do it. Other than that, right now, you are a buyer, not a net seller, until you get back inside of this market profile. All right, so that's what market profile does. So we know then now that we can trade off market profile for supply, for support and resistance, and supply demand lines. That's exactly what we do. Now, what we can do, let's say for crude oil, I'll bring it over here. Crude's working in a range here. What the supply demand lines like to do is we work from supply to demand, demand to supply. Now, I told you this, 200 works really good. If you are below it, 
you see that was a retest short. If they come across my supply demand lines right there, where they break back through, look at the long. We had a W bottom and we take off. But you can notice on the way up from yesterday, look how accurate the supply demand lines are. They're extremely accurate. This stopped almost to the tick. This one also broke retest. Look how we're working in between supply demand. Another thing that you can really understand about supply demand is this. And you got to take this, you got to really understand this. I know right now at 4120 is a great pivot level to trade off of because I know my supply line got rejected. Price came off of my supply line. So if price came off my supply line at that level, that's called a rejected level. I know that that's a great level to trade off of now. So what I want to do, my trend's up, right? I got green trend boxes. My moving averages are all up. I want to break through the supply line. I want to retest that 4120, and I want to look for positive market delta. Because I know that's a good pivot level. Why? Because it got rejected, got rejected. Vice versa, it got rejected here also, right? So right there, it got rejected, meaning it came off of that demand line. So I know that that's a good pivot level. Let's say the market starts trending down. Then I can break that demand line. It becomes new supply, and I can trade off of it. That's a good pivot level to trade off of. I know this is a great level to trade off of because it stopped almost to the tick, 4064. So I know that if it comes down and we're in an uptrend, I can trade off V bottom, or if we're in a downtrend, I can look for a break retest off that also. So you use the supply demand lines that get rejected off of, and you'll see sometimes they'll stop to the exact tick within one or two ticks sometimes, and they'll just take off. Then you know that is a future level to trade off of because they're leaving their footprint. The institutional traders, the banks, the hedge funds, the high-frequency traders, all the algorithms out there, they just left their footprint, and they just told us on crude oil that 4120 is a good pivot level to trade off of. Those are called rejected levels. And if you get good at that in the room, you do very, very well. A lot of traders inside and outside the room, they look for the pivot levels. Because now I know in crude oil, Gerald, go over to crude real quick. And we'll turn this off in a second. And if I look at crude oil, I know my market profile is getting rejected at my two most important levels. My high value, volume profile, and my developing right there. Remember, the dots aren't as important. They give me good projection levels to scale contracts. My most important market profile is a thick red and thin red. It got rejected to the exact tick at 4120. It got rejected right there at my supply line. So as a trader, I know that they just left their footprint. And that's not my opinion. That has nothing to do with me thinking that's a good level to trade off of. That's actually order flow. That that is a great pivot that I want to start and I want to start watching for it to break retest, right? So that'd be a great level to trade off because it breaks through market profile. It's breaking through my, remember, the only two things you need to watch is supply demand and market profile. No other indicator in the world. Show me one indicator in the world since you guys have been seeing this, how accurate these are since I released the supply demand line. They are extremely accurate. You add that with market profile, I don't know of any indicator out there and I've seen tons of them out there, and this is the best work we've done yet because market profile has always been trumped pretty much any indicator I've ever come up with. But now you got your supply demand and your market profile that works in synergy with each other. So now these are projected supply demand lines that actually get rejected. They're leaving the footprint, gives us a place to trade. Now we have future projections. It's pretty neat. So that's how we want to do it. We want to use our trend boxes and our moving averages to show trend and then only trade off our market profile supply demand lines. That's the most highest probability trade you're going to get.